join me here at uh, Royal Berkshire in uh, the Bergfield complex. We're back again for another go. We came about a year ago to fish the blue pool across the way. Had a great time, a few of the lads from Tracker get together once a year, have a good catch up and hopefully bag a few fish. So we got her about an hour ago. Some of them wasted no time in grabbing their stalking rods and their bucket bags and, and shooting off down the lake to uh, try and nail a quick bite. Um, good angling, fair play. They were uh, definitely quicker than me in getting off the mark. I've took my time to load the excess barra. I'm going to mosey on around the lake, trying to suss it out. You know, I'm not going to jump in anywhere quick. I'm just going to suss it out, see where the fish are. Not necessarily for a quick bite, but just to suss it out for tonight uh, and going into tomorrow. The access bar is perfect for this sort of angling where you just want to load up your kit. You don't really know what you're going to be doing yet. It enables me to, uh, as I say, not commit myself. I can just fish off it all day long and it's just great for that sort of angling. Without further ado, I'm going to shoot over to the lake, probably put the rods out in the first sort of lightly looking swim, give it an hour or two while I'm scanning the rest of the lake and uh, if nothing else, I've learned about that particular area. So enough chatting, I want to get to it. Right, here we are on Gold Lake on the Advanced Angling Complex. I've been fortunate to do uh, quite a few of these trips before and we've always missed that element of a quick fish. And for me, this time around, I thought that's the angle we need to sort of hit. So we turned up at the latest morning before even shoes had got, even opened his yeah. boot. Me and Marv had got his bucket bags, we got his rods, his net and, and mat. Straight around the lake, Alex was talking to shoes. I don't even think they saw there was a uh, sneak off quickly. So we went into one of the first swims, didn't we Marv? Yeah. Found some fish at the back of the wind. The wind's pushing, hacking from behind us. We thought they were going to be on there because it was southwesterly, but then they weren't. They were all just fizzing at back, a few different, few different yeah. patches. Yeah. Uh, so that's where we headed straight away. We'd already had a chat at home, though, to be honest, hadn't we? Planned out what we were going to do, different tactics and stuff. You were going with solid bags and heavy, yeah. heavy leads, and I was going completely opposite, light leads and running rigs, kind of working as a team, really. Because we were told it was quite weedy here as well, finding out before we came to the lake, you know, solid bags, you know, you just, you can turn up, Sort them out quickly and cast them straight away, yeah. and you're straight onto showing fish. Presentation spot on straight away. Um, got round in and uh, we flicked them out, thinking, oh yeah, it's not going to be long here, it's not going to be long anyway. Three hours later, four well, hours I think, later. I think it's a lot longer than that, sort of five hours later. Um, but yeah, we've tried all sorts, we've been in three, di three different swims. Oh, easy. Um, more. Five minutes ago, just as we <laughs> were about to sort of do the filming, uh, we had the occurrence, just about to sort of start talking, and uh, whack, up it goes. Running off all my cameras going, my power packs going everywhere, running around to the rod, lifting into it, and it just it was solid. Not sure if it was a tape, but yeah, you never know. It's uh, it's one of them in here which is really, really sort of gutting and wounding, but it is what Plenty it is, time isn't it? Though, mate, and the thing is we've still got fish showing. Uh, yeah. like I say, Alex and shoes are on the wind. Uh, we're at the back of the wind and to be honest, I think we've got more fish showing around uh, yeah, yeah. our area at the moment. It's either that or shoes and Allah keeping it quiet and not saying much, are they? So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, knowing shoes, uh, yeah, very, very good angler shoes and he'll not, yeah. not tell you much. Have you seen much? Well, I don't know what you're on about. Yeah, don't yeah. know what you're on about. Anyway, that, that, that shoes, Alex is obviously a very, very good angler as well, he'll not tell you much. He's using a mobile so. approach though, isn't he as well? Alex is, yeah, he is. he's on the access barrow pushing it around the lake mm -hmm. and obviously he's, he's Probably not as mobile as us. He's got his brew kit with him though. He has got his as brew, got his brew kit. kit. Oh, well, he's, he's one step ahead of us, isn't he? That's yeah. for sure. Probably have another hour stalking, um, see if we can winkle one out and then maybe get a couple of spots sorted for the night. Yeah, yeah, there's, then... there's not much daylight left now. It's probably two or three hours yeah. or so. Obviously, we need to find somewhere we're going to pitch up for the night, fish like a static approach, and then probably pick up the stalking again tomorrow morning and then yeah. just, just sort of see what happens, really, feeling with the stalking. And hopefully, our efforts pay off. Shoes is crossed. Well, yeah, fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Shoes is sort of static. 
Uh, Alex is moving about and obviously we are really mobile just with the bucket bags and a couple of rods and a net. So If shoes does start bagging up, we can always poach his margin. <laughs> you, we'll go down the bottom end and we'll just poke, poke through yeah, and poach his margin. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see what happens tonight and see what the night brings. After a uh, quick walk around the lake, I noticed the lads were quickly getting their bags together, try and stalk a few, because there was a few fish showing. I, on the other hand, decided, right, I'm gonna do something completely different. I'm gonna set myself up in an area and stay put. Uh, let all the young guns run around trying to catch these fish. I'm gonna try and get the fish to come to me. Um, it's a small lake, uh, and this time of year, while it's warm, the fish are gonna be active and they're gonna be everywhere. They're going to be, I can be up that area of the lake, the fish will visit me. If I'm down here, the fish will visit me. So hopefully at some stage, the fish will come and get, or well, particularly pick up one of my baits. The bait in my back, so there's a few fish in the back of there, so hopefully that might produce a fish for me later on. But wind is pushing this way. I've decided to uh, fish this area. Like I say, let the guys run around the place. I'm staying down here. Chicken dinner's on as well. So um, I'm looking forward to my, uh, my dinner this evening and um, we'll see what happens. But you never know in the morning, there might be a nice fish on the bank. Coming into the evening now, I spent the day fishing off the access barrow. I plotted up in a swim, basically put two rods out to a couple of really nice areas, surrounded by weed, small holes, the only hard I could really find to fish on. So I've incorporated a signet baiting pole. I've dropped two traps, fairly close in the margins really. I didn't want to go in too heavy. I didn't want to overcommit myself. As you'll see, I've got the, uh, got the shelter up now. I've committed myself to this swim. If nothing happens tonight in this area, which I'm kind of confident it, it will do because I've found some lovely spots and, and, and the fish have been around. I'll be packing down early doors and anticipating a move, but I'll be watching the uh, water like a hawk first thing in the morning. So hopefully we can get on some fish either way. Check him out. The plan has paid off, staying put. I'd seen fish starting to show coming into dark about 9.30 at night now. The middle rod ramped off and uh, this was the culprit, a lovely chunky 20 pound mirror. Great to get off the mark here down at Gold Lake Burfield. Hopefully the first of a few. Check him out. I was just in the process of uh, packing down camp, anticipating a move this morning. 
It's about 7 a.m. now, I guess, and the left hand rod absolutely melted off. The result is this chunky mirror, 2610. I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. I might have to stay put, seeing what I've seen this morning, and, and with this second fish now, I might have to stick about for a bit longer. But I'm still going to semi pack down because you never know how they're going to move, especially after capture. Well, I'm going to slip this one back, and I believe Sam across the way just had a fish as well at the same time. So, and I believe it's a good one as well. I'll get this back and uh, see you later on, hopefully with some more fish. Well, this morning we've had a bit of result. Prior to the trip, myself and Marvin walking for Instagram, looking at obviously the Gold Lake stock, seeing what you know what was in there. Scrolling down, we saw one of the fish that you know, really, really stuck out. A mega, mega old fish. We've had, we've talked it onto the bank. It's actually uh, in the sling. So let's get it out and let's show you what we've had. Right, here we are. Just got her out of the water. It's one of the fish that Nigel Sharp had sort of a few months ago. And yeah, I am well chuffed to have this one. We've talked it onto the bank. So let's have a good look at her. <sighs> what a fish. Starting to develop its autumn, autumnal colors now. Yeah, I am made up with this. As I mentioned, myself and Marvin were only looking on Instagram. So yesterday, I'm prior to the trip, we said, wouldn't it be mega to just land this, get this on the bank, and wow, what a pristine, pristine fish. <sighs> yesterday, we were stalking so it gave me a good opportunity to find out where the fish were in the day. We saw repeatedly a few fish jump out in a certain area, so that gave me a good idea of where I need to be at night. So yeah, I am absolutely made up with this one. Let's have a look at the other side. Look at that. <laughs> Blown away. What a fish, one of Gold Lake's jewels. And to get this now, going to what we saw yesterday, a few fish sailing. I'm, uh, I'm blown away, 32.10. Just look at that. Mega. So let's do a few stills of this. Absolute incredible creature. And let's slip her back. That 30 was a, a real turn up for the books. I was planning on moving, uh, you know, the stalking yesterday that we did, moving around, throws up many opportunities I think we'd be missing, but I'm gonna stay put for another 24 hours at least because I've just had another one. It actually nearly pulled the rod in. Ridiculous run, co complete contrast to the one before, the 30 pounder. A lovely, lovely mirror of just 21 pound. Really, really tough to get that. I was planning on the move, but I'm going to stay here put for 24 hours. The, the stalking will definitely pick up if not have anything else in the next 24 hours. I'll be moving around with the bucket bags again, see if we can get an opportunity somewhere close in on the other pegs. Marvin, on the other hand, is, uh, is a bit miffed at the minute. He's, uh, he's just had another bream and two in the night, so I think we'll leave him to cool down a bit over there. He has been baiting a spot close in. He's going to keep an eye on that. If anything shows and you know, he walks down, looks for the, uh, the glasses, Polarized glasses and sees a spot, he sees a fish there that's sort of eating on it. He's got his, his kit. So yeah, let's see what happens. But at the minute, I think I'll leave him for five minutes because he's, uh, he's well and truly miffed. Moving on from that, 
just re reposition the rod after that 21 pounder and shoes over there is absolutely casting all over the place absolutely foaming it up but you know he needs to find a spot so let's go and see what he's doing <laughs> Right then, Sam, you're actually right, to be honest with you. While you've been sitting over there eating sausages and having bacon butties, I've been um, working hard. I couldn't really find any clear spots with a lead, so I decided to use the old weed rake, and two hours later, I've created my own little clear spot. But really, it's not difficult to do, but what I don't see many people doing it, and I remember growing up tench fishing that where you read all the books, it used to say, it still does, it, it says rake a swim to catch tench. So with that in mind, I'm raking a swim to catch carp, hopefully. Now then, to create a spot is very, very simple. First, you need to make sure you have the kit that's strong enough to do the job. This is the Papel spot and marker rod. It's very, very strong. So you don't have to use it for spot and marking, you can use it for weed raking. Coupled with a 45 pound braid and a 65 pound leader, it's perfect for the job. You will, at some point, you will lose this tackle. Uh, you, your line will break, you'll lose your rakes, so I suggest buying a couple of the rakes. Right, the way I actually clear a, a little area in the weed is very, very simple. Find a little spot on the ground where I want to cast from, and I make sure I cast from that same spot every time. So I look at a tree line, I have a nice little high tree in the distance, and that's the area I'm gonna to cast to. So I'll cast the rake out, wait until it hits the bottom, and then clip up, and then I'll do two or three turns of line onto the reel. The reason I do that is so it protects the, um, the clip from under tension, you don't want the clip to break. So now I've pointed the tip at the rake, and I slowly walk backwards. Now the first 30 or 40 times, you're gonna pull a lot of weed out, so you're gonna come under lots of tension. Once you've done this, you'll start creating a big ball of weed, which you can see down here. And then you'll continue doing this now for a, at least an hour and a half, two hours. But what I try to, try to achieve and what I try to visualize is when I walk back, the distance I walk back with the rod pointed at the rake is exactly the same area the rake is clearing out in the lake. So if I walk back a rod's length, that rake has traveled along the bottom a rod's length which hopefully is creating a channel, a clear channel of weed, a rod length in distance, really. So once I've cleared that first channel, so what I do, I'll go about 10 foot back. I'll then cast to the right and do the same process, to the left, do the same process. So now if you imagine, I've cleared a little area, probably about three foot, a meter in width, and it's about 10 foot in length. Now that spot isn't 100% clear. Uh, other than going in and checking it, I know there's probably going to be a few wisps of weed still there which could interrupt with your rig. So I'm going to choose a rig that's suitable for this type of fishing and that of course is the solid PVA bag. I'm going to get one tied up, I'm going to clip it up a couple of three foot shorter than the rake, get it cast out, put some bait on it and see what happens. <laughs> him out. This one came out of the blue. I was just getting the rods out for this evening. Middle rod, all sorted, probably been in 10 minutes. The rod just bent over and it was away. The result, this chunky 32 pound mirror. What a result. So I'm going to take a few picks, slip her back and uh, let you know what been been up to throughout the day and, and the tactics that led up to this capture.
Well, wasn't that a cracking fish? Uh, now I'll put it safely back, I'll just run you through what I've been up to today. Well, it started, if you remember, quite early on this morning. I had that cracking 26 pound mirror. Sam at the same time, he also had a, a 32 pound mirror down the other end, so it really kicked off, which was fantastic to see. Action at both ends of the lake, so they seemed to be well spread out. After that, basically I decided to stay put. I didn't even take the house down, to be honest with you. I'd seen enough to warrant staying in this position until something dictated otherwise around the lake. So, further from that, it got to kind of mid-late morning, uh, bite time as I thought it would be, sort of dried up, no, no fish action, no shows going on around the lake. So I got a bit restless, I reeled the rods in, I went for a little wonder. About lunch time, the wind picked up massively, it went up straight up to like 45 miles an hour, southwesterly, you know, if uh, Colesburg did, did conditions, that'll be those, they're mental. So yeah, uh, I got down the other end where the wind was blowing straight into my face. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't believe nothing was down there. They've got to be down there somewhere, but I couldn't spot them. So what I did, I legged it back, got a couple of rods and thought I'd have a, a con a couple of hours on the end of the wind, just see, see what would come. Nothing came, unfortunately. Uh, mad as it sounds, they just didn't get on the end of it. So after returning to my swim, after a, a couple of unsuccessful hours stalking down the other end on the end of the wind. I set about sorting the rods out for the evening ahead. Left hand rod was first. That was going out on the baiting pole with um, some micro pellet, eight mil boilies, a little bit of sweet corn, a bit of hydro wheat liquid and a PVA bag. That went out sweetly. That was a spot that I actually took a fish on first thing this morning. So uber confident on that one. Uh, the middle rod went out further where I'd seen a couple of shows previously today. It took a bit of work that, that, that spot because it wasn't great. I had to weed it, well rake it out a little bit, you know, get it a bit firmer for a better drop. Managed to do that and got a decent drop. That was out on a, a low pop-up rig, like a Ronnie rig. 25, 30 baits around it. Yeah, I was confident with that. Then there's the right hand rod, that was going out on the baiting pole again but instead of the PVA bag, that went out on a really short, stiff boom, um, sort of Ronnie rig, because uh, that, that spot's really hard. Uh, it goes down with a real firm donk, and it's also where I took my fish from last night. And it was just as I was finishing positioning that right-hand rod close in, that the middle rod, that amazingly I'd put out five minutes before, absolutely screamed off, melted off, before I even got the bobbin on, you know, it was one of them. So yeah, really hard dogged fight. Uh, managed to get it in the net and that lovely 32 pound mirror as you've seen. Basically the way I've set out for the night, I've, I've took a fish off each, each of these spots now. Um, so yeah, going into the night, uh, uber confident of uh, action to come. Fingers crossed. <laughs> an interesting morning we've had after being a bit dubious last night thinking am I going to catch uh, Dale gave me a bit of reassurance uh, saying there were fish on spot etc but I just wasn't convinced uh, and then first light this morning absolute ripping take and the result was this lovely 2810 mirror absolute chuffed to bits with this one gave me a real battle the mad thing is it really kicked off this morning Sam's had one and this is just one of three for me, so we'll get this one back and we'll have a good look at the others. Well chuffed.
Well, 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 I couldn't let Marv have all the action this morning. The rain's turned up. Marv's absolutely holding the next swim. I think he's had four bites and I've joined him this one. 24-6 this one went. Absolutely buzzing. Rain's coming as I've mentioned. They've really got their heads down. And yeah, this is a prize. I'm absolutely made up with this one. And Marv's not had it all to himself this morning. Yes, get in there. been carnage down at Gold Lake at Burfield this morning. As you'd have already had seen, Marvin, some over the way there, they've been into some action this morning. I myself have managed to uh, snare a couple of fish down this end of the lake this morning. A smaller fish that should be seen right now. And also this cracking scaly mirror. Both fish came off the long spot that I took the last fish off of late yesterday afternoon. And with these conditions, I'm hoping there might well be a couple more to come. Well, check him out. Just as I was returning that lovely scaly mirror, the right-hand rod screams off. And the culprit is this chunky mirror. Fought hard. Looks like he's got a few scars on him. He's seen, he's seen, some, uh, seen some life, he has. Couldn't have asked for any. It's been carnage here this morning. It's, it's proper kicking off now. I'm gonna get it back and uh, get my breath back and, and sort, my, uh, sort my camp out and hopefully bag some more fish while the going's good. Right, so as we said earlier, we were going to do a little bit of talking regarding rigs and tactics. I'll start first because, if I'm honest, I think I went about it the wrong way. When I read through the rules and whatnot, they said there was a nut band, so I decided to um, go for the next best thing and I cut myself some maples up, get some 10 mil boilies. Just lots of little bits keep them uh, in an area because it's supposedly very weedy, which it is. Rigs-wise, I decided to uh, fish a little 10 mil fish mill boiler. Uh, topped off with some super sweet actual maize, not artificial, proper maize uh, that I've been soaking in some sweet additive. Honestly, I really did think I got it sussed. Uh, just something a little bit different. Really good plan, cooking the maples up in the kitchen. The missus went mad for two days, but I thought it was going to be worth it. I absolutely got hammered by bream. And I mean, you can see me, I'm covered in bream slime. You were catching carp, weren't you, from the off? Yeah, I, I, to be fair, I was laughing with that approach because I thought I knew straight away you were going to get, you know, the big bream, aren't you? They've had you double, you double figures. You did actually warn me as well at home. Well, you? <laughs> well, you know, you can't teach a new, an old dog new tricks, can you, and all that. But yeah, but basically all I did was go straight in with a bolly approach. I knew there was some bream in here. With that in mind, I went straight in with just 15 mil baits and lots of it. I put, you know, four kilo out straight on two spots because the first night I just fished two rods. And yeah, I just went straight in with, uh, with Ronnie rigs, basically. And, the, and you know, that is the in rig and it just does the do. Everywhere I've took it, I've used it, I've caught on it everywhere and it's just an efficient hooker. So, and it's perfect for the, the kind of spots that I found. They were both about the size of landing nets, 42 inch landing nets, really, really small amongst weed. And those spots were absolutely rock hard, you know, the casting out, bang, it was cracking down. Uh, I just knew they were the spots that had been fed on recently, so loads of bait were applied to that. Boilers, not maples or anything else, because no, no. I knew them bream just, were just, just going to be straight on. So as soon as Marv were, uh, were putting that in, I was just sort of like <laughs> really laughing away. He didn't but, come yeah. and tell me though, he didn't come and say to me, Marv, you're catching bream, I've had a carp, this is, this is what I've done. I had to go round sneaking, helping him sort his fish out, clocked here around the, the Ronnies, so we were on a boilie approach because I thought it was literally raining boilies. 
So I thought, right, I'm going to have to just copy him. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. I basically just ripped him off, went and tied a load of Ronnies up, um, put the maples back in the barra and just got the boilies out and, and give him the boilies. My spot were a little bit different to yours. Yours were yeah, a bit shallower. Yeah. Uh, I was fishing yeah. in deeper water and it was um, silty, but I just thought we'd seen him bubbling earlier on when we had a walk round and you could see there was in them silty areas and I just thought they were going to come and it did work yeah. in the end. So ripping him off and copying his tactics, once again, I've been doing it since we were about 13 year old, so it's worked again for me. So Yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think with that in mind, I think the main thing we've got, we've got from this and learned is to be sort of be pliable and, and mould yourself to yeah, your angling you rather probably. than yeah, yeah. so you know turn up with preconceived ideas. I'm going to do this. I'm going to fish yeah. in maple small baits. We've seen them. We, we knew there was some bream. You know, probably the bubbling and stuff yeah, we saw yeah, in the bream. Probably. Go in with you know read the situations that we've seen there and yeah, putting 15 mil baits in. It works. Whole baits and so you, it just worked, didn't it? Straight lots, from the off. Lots of them as well, though, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Like, they like the bait. They like they? the bait. Yeah, they do yeah, like the so bait. So plenty of boilies. Um, white pop-ups um, on, on, on the Ronnies. Yeah. I think that yeah. way when Jerry Hammond come down yesterday and he said to me, have you had out? I said, nothing. He just went, put a white one on. And I thought, do you know what? I've got nothing to lose. I'm already covered in bream slime. So whacked a white one on. And yeah, and that man's had more, more carp than you've had at dinners, which yeah, is yeah. quite the same. I was going I've had a lot of at dinners, <laughs> though, to be fair. <laughs> I don't know about that. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah we've definitely moulded ourselves to the angling, the situation just that we've seen. And there, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's worked. It's worked a treat. So yeah, spot on that. I suppose some really best going to see what, what shoes. You know, I know we're in the middle of the storm, but there were a, a tree creaking over there. I'm not sure if it's shoes sort of winching up a, a noose around his neck because he's, you know, he's not caught anything yet. So I think he's sobbing a bit. But best going to see if he's all right. I think yeah. that's uh, that's the main thing. See how we get on. Well, when I arrived two days ago, I set myself a plan. And it's a plan that probably a lot of you have done in the past. You set yourself, you think on the way down on the motorway, you think, right, if I can get in one swim, create some spots, I can get the fish to come to me, especially on small lakes like this. It's an intimate, intimate little lake and the fish are moving all the way around and they should visit you at some stage. That was the plan. So it's an experiment for me because a lot of people are forced into pegs or into swims by a draw or even by booking pegs. So that was the plan. I've created a nice little spot clearing the weed the other day. Unfortunately, the plan, the plan did work, um, but the fish fell off. So that was really a uh, knife in the back, but it just proved that clearing a swim, you can get bites. Just been talking to the bailiff as well, and he's just put me on a nice little spot. So I'm going to try that one for the evening as well. So really, the the moral of the story: um, if I was turning up here again on a small lake, on any lake, I would spend time finding the fish. If you have the time uh, and the daylight, find the fish, trying to try and get on them, and try and catch them where they are. Don't assume they're gonna to come to you. That's the only advice I could give you for uh, fishing anywhere, is to find them and try and catch them first. However, on a brighter note, I do have quite a few hours left. We've got till probably about 10, half past nine, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, so there's plenty of time. Like I say, the bailiff just put me on a spot, so hopefully he reckons it's, uh, it's a banker. So let's see. Um, but, um, I'll, I'll persevere, um, I'll be positive, and hopefully, when you come back to me, I'm holding a nice carp.
After that flurry of action this morning, um, all's been quite quiet through the afternoon now, so I'm very happy with what I've had. The flurry of action this morning was hectic and uh, pretty, uh, well, it was carnage to be fair, and uh, I've loved it, absolutely brilliant. Well, I've actually reeled the rods in now. I'm gonna pop across the other side of the lake. We're getting a curry delivered. We're gonna have a good old social and a catch up. Everything's clipped up for when I get back. I know where the spots are. They're all, they're all primed now. It's, it's just a matter of getting back after social, hitting the clip, filling the lead down. They'll be sweet and hopefully we can nail another one. If anything, I just really hope Shoesy bags one. He's put so much effort in. He lost the fish off the spot this morning. He really deserves a fish. So fingers crossed for Shoesy. Well, after a lovely curry last night, came back to the swim, got the rods out, and the storm that had been threatening for the last couple of days arrived, and with it, very strong winds. It was carnage, there were branches flying around everywhere. But that didn't put the fish off feeding, as this one shows. Just over 24 pound lovely mirror. I think this might be fish number eight now, but this wasn't the only fish to come out this morning, as you're about to see. Well, the attrick of fish I had yesterday morning wasn't enough to prove that switching to a boiling only approach was the way forward. How about the two I've had this morning? Topped by this stunning 30 pound, 12 ounce gold lake mirror. So chuffed. Just proved that being adaptable is, is the only way to fish. But I tell you what, the, the real fairy tales somewhere a bit further down that bank Wow, what a fantastic night we had last night. Wind everywhere. I actually blame the curry we had, but I'm sure others will disagree. Um, the first light, I thought, it's not gonna happen. Just one of those feelings, I'm gonna go home uh, fishless. But, you know, you gotta persevere, and within 20 minutes of me saying that, this little beauty, well, I say little, it's 28, 29, and a half pounds was uh, screaming down the margins and I have never shook so much in my life. I can't believe how much this fish meant to me to this morning. I gave a big scream when it went in the net, but it's a little bit of effort, two hours raking a swim, pulling all that weed in, and this has made the trip worthwhile. It's been fantastic. So hopefully, she behave well, we'll get her up, and you'll be able to see what she's like. Ha, look at that. 
What a beautiful fish. She is stunning. Woohoo! And I'll tell you what, just before I put her back, just remember when you turn up on the lake and you can't get on the fish, just put a little bit of effort in and something like this could be yours. Oh, what an amazing venue. We've had a great session on here. Lots of fish caught, rounded off by Shoesy, banking that lovely mirror this morning was just the icing on the cake. Hope you've enjoyed watching. We'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.